Folks, it takes something pretty special to get me to do a whole video reviewing just a frame. It's not that I don't care about quadcopter frames. I love quadcopter frames. It's, well, for one thing, a lot of quadcopter frames are kind of iterative. They're, they're cool, but it's not like you haven't seen anything but like it before. And the other thing is that it, I'd rather just do a video where I do a build around a frame. That way you get more value for your video watching minutes. But I've got two frames here, both of which I think have really innovative, interesting, different, novel characteristics. One of them is going to blow your mind with where it put the FPV camera. <laughs> and I'm going to put these frames together for you, review them a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you guys to help me decide which of the two I'm going to build out. So stay tuned. first frame we're looking at here is the Snapdragon, and this is, in a lot of ways, it's not dissimilar to other frames on the market, but what makes the Snapdragon really stand out is that it is completely customizable, and we'll, I'll show you this when I build it out, but it's completely customizable. You can build it out uh, at 88 grams weight with all these extra reinforcements, or you can get it all the way down to 52 grams with foam core carbon and no reinforcements. So depending on whether you're maybe just getting started as a racer and you need a little bit more reinforcement, or maybe you could use the, the tougher version for practice, but then the ultra light version for race day, these are your choices. All the parts are completely interchangeable. And we say all the parts are interchangeable. Another nice feature is it's got this interesting interlocking mechanism for the arms where it's single screw replacement. The arm slides into a pin like this and it locks into place and it's just got a single screw that you take out to replace an arm. We're going to see how that works and how secure that is in real life. Let's go ahead and take this apart and put it together. Take it apart. I mean, take it out of the bags and put it together. Yeah, that's what I meant. So we've got the bottom plate here and what they call the mid plate, which are going to go on top of each other and then the arms are going to go in between them. You can use different length screws depending on the height of the stack that you're going. If you're, if you're doing a triple high stack, you'll use longer screws. If you're doing a double high stack, you'll use shorter screws. I think it comes with 35 millimeters screws for a three high stack, uh, but uh, they're just M3 screws. You can find them anywhere. And then once this is together, you can insert the arms. And you can see the, the mechanism they've got here where the arm just slides in and it goes around that screw. And then a second screw goes through to hold it in place. And this is a 5.5 millimeter driver. Uh, there are only two sizes of nut driver that I think are important to have when you're working on quads. And one is the eight millimeter driver that uh, is used for your frame nuts. Uh, your, not your frame, your prop nuts, and the other is a 5.5 millimeter driver that's used for these M3 nuts. I guess uh, if you're working on micros and you have a lot of M2s, you might want one smaller than that, whatever that 5 millimeter or whatever it is. Those are the two sizes I keep around though. Uh, now this is actually going to be a pretty short uh, assembly video, <laughs> then we'll get on to the second frame I want to show you today, because this frame, there's, there's, that's basically all there is to putting it together. And that also means maintenance is going to be simple, although it may be a little more fragile than one with more sort of frame parts protecting the inter electronics. But basically, you've just got these two, four arms sandwiched between the bottom plates, and then the components go on these taller screws for the standoffs. And it comes with some spacers. These are screw down spacers. They don't slide on, they screw on. Uh, and that'll separate your components from each other. And then the top plate will go on. I'll show you that in a second. We got to point out that these arms actually interlock in the bottom. So they kind of come together and that helps keep them from wiggling or sliding. You can see as I pull on this, there's basically no motion. I mean, you may not be able to see that, but I can tell you there's basically no lateral motion. And if you guys who have an Armitan rooster and you're work complaining about, you know, the arms are, are moving, right? It is possible to design, I mean, this is a single screw holding it in and then it's slotted on a pin, but the fact that the arms lock together the way they do is playing into the fact that they don't move. It, we could wish maybe that the rooster had been designed the same way, um, could have preserved the ability to have changeable arms without having some of that slop. But 
that's a topic for another video. So we could perhaps put like a 4-in-1 ESC here on the bottom if there was enough spacing with these nuts. And then we could put like the spacers on and a flight controller and maybe even a third stack on top. The camera mount goes on over the 3D printed spacers like so. Right, so it's going to just hold the camera like that. And it'll rest against the flight controller or whatever board is down there. And there are a ton of other 3D com printed components, like for example, this is a holder for a, a Luminar Axis uh, UFL or MMCX, so you can just have that hanging out the back. There are, there's a, a GoPro mount, there's arm protectors, there's a, this is a little shark fin that can be used for, uh, for if you have turtle mode or something, but that's the gist of how the quad would get built out. It's basically your, your typical sort of racing ultra compact stack with the camera hanging, a micro sized camera hanging out the front and maybe something like a Luminar Axi hanging off the back, Axi Stubby hanging off the back. So of course if you have access to a 3D printer the world is your oyster and you can come up with whatever you like. The top then goes on, and this was a little confusing to me at first, but as near as I can tell, the intent for the way the top goes on is that these spacers will be left with some threads sticking off the top. The top will settle on, and the screws will go down into the spacers, which are then held in place just by their own tension, I guess. And this, to me, is the most questionable part of the build. So you've got these spacers here, and these are going to be turned up. So there are threads hanging off the end there, and then that'll line up. And the screw will go down into the top. Of the spacer, like so. And there you go. In its simplest form, there is the Schnapp Dragon. Um, it's an ultralight racing frame with an interesting interlocking arm design at the bottom and a single screw replaceable arm. Just take one screw out, the whole thing. A lot of these guys, you have to take two screws out, and in the case of this one, it would be one of the stack screws. So they've done a really clever thing in their ability to give you interchangeable arms uh, without having to sort of compromise the electrical integrity of the frame. And it's a pretty nice little lightweight frame, little compact frame there, if that's what you're into, which I'm not so much, but if you were, hmm, nice job. <laughs> The next one I want to show you is the Aerodyne RC Rex, and you gotta, I just got to show you a picture of this one, what it looks like when it's completed, because there's no way to grasp what these guys are going for just from looking at the pile of parts. It, what, what the F? The camera's mount, this is so crazy, it's either awesome or stupid. Putting the camera on the rear, of course, so that when you crash, you're not smashing straight into the camera. What an idea, but how does it handle? How does it fly differently? I don't know. And as much as this frame annoys me with how complicated and fiddly it is to put together, wait till you see it, it's so, I'm so curious that I'm tempted to build it anyway. Um, so this frame is so fiddly to build. I've got the instructions and me putting it together here on the bench without doing a full build doesn't give you the full picture because like it's designed that you'll, you'll put the video transmitter here with double sided tape and it all kind of goes together. And as a result, I kind of think this is one of the least maintainable. It better not break because if you have to get in there, it's going to be a huge pain in the butt to take it apart. But let's just have a look at it. So we've got these parts, which are um, aluminum. Are they aluminum? Yeah, they're not steel. <laughs> they appear to be aluminum. I think it's milled aluminum. I can think I can see tooling marks here. Uh, and the arms are straight fiber, straight weave carbon fiber. So a lot of times when they lay carbon fiber, they'll lay the fibers in different sh uh, directions, sheets, and then they'll mill with, with a, like a CNC machine, they'll mill the parts out. But what you've got here, you can kind of see it if you look at the direction of the fibers here on the edge. They've like molded these in a mold. So it's the fibers um, normally on carbon fiber right here you have a weak spot because the fibers would be going this direction or whatever and then you would just have the uh, the resin holding it together where, where it goes around the bend but that's not what they're doing here they they've just bent the fibers in a mold and I'm kind of confused because my understanding is that this is makes it way more expensive but uh, there you go that's how they've decided to do it and then it just kind of fits in here like so and 
you immediately see as you start doing this there's a little bit of issue with the fit up the pieces are not perfectly see this one will kind of doesn't want to go in the pieces are not perfectly identical yeah that one barely wants to go in to be honest let's see if it'll go in one of the others I could push it in but I mean the, the milled piece should be identical yeah see so it can be a little hard And I don't know if this is true just because the ones I got are like a pre-production sample or something, or if they're all like that, but they they all kind of seem to be like that. <laughs> Let me see if I can find four of them that'll go in easily. That one went in really easily. I'm a little scared that I'm doing something wrong. I don't think so, but uh, it's such a fiddly build that... It's unfortunate they've they've used aluminum screws throughout here and I guess that saves weight but I've already stripped one I hate aluminum screws this style of screw I've already stripped this guy out and I didn't try very hard either and now it's never coming out unless I do something extraordinary but there you go that's the nature of these aluminum screws they will they'll strip really easily if they're not machined perfectly the arms go in and then these screws m3 by 8 steel screw pan the, the countersunk goes in here i okay why i don't know why an 8 and not a 10 i don't see a point to that why couldn't it be a 10 and just keep our life simple minimize your bill of materials frame designers have as few different parts as necessary. Look, we've got an M3 by 8 right here, an M3 by 10 everywhere else. But if you look on the underside, it certainly looks like there's plenty of room for a 10 to be there, unless later in the build something comes through the other side or something. Maybe there's a good reason for it. I'm sure that the frame designer will jump into the comments and tell me why I'm an idiot. But as it seems to me right now, it seems like you've got these 8mm screws that I know have to distinguish from the 10s for no apparent good reason. Why not just give me all 10s and keep my life simple as a customer? I don't know. I see this a lot. The frame designers oftentimes have like a whole bunch of different types of screws. They'll include like pan heads and and uh, cap heads or some are countersunk and some aren't or there's some fours some sixes and some eights if you're going to do that nonsense the least you can do is give it to me in a bag and mark the bag so that i don't have to have my freaking calipers out measuring um, as i said armitan does a great job at this in that their build instructions have actual one-to-one -one size printed pictures of the of them I've got this one on upside down here I think it's supposed to line up there isn't it you guys could take a lesson from Lego you ever put a Lego set together you got bag number one bag number two bag number three huh yeah oh I see oh, I got it this piece goes here yes I got it now I got it I think yes oh, oh, oh I got it so this piece, which is the battery holder, goes here, and then the counter screws, sunk screws go in. Yay, I found it. But I want to take a second and talk about this battery holder. So this battery holder appears to be basically um, like two millimeter carbon milled down to one millimeter. You can see this part has been milled out to create the space where the battery holder goes. And it really, I'm really skeptical that that's not going to rip off in a crash. I see what they're going for, but I really think this ought to be thicker because see this is going to go on just like this How, that's going to rip off isn't it right am I, am I out of line here I think so there's the battery holder now I'm supposed to be putting the battery strap through right now technically so let's try and slide because when the battery strap breaks are you gonna are you gonna take the uh, screws out to put the new battery strap in you're gonna have to Oh no, it's it's going, it's going. It'll it'll go. No. Okay. So now the base plate has been put together and the arms are installed. And I gotta say, I hope you never break an arm <laughs> because having to take you have to 
you can't take even one arm out as far as I can tell. The whole base plate has to come off because the arms are curved, right? So if you break an arm, I mean, they're supposed to be super duper strong, right? But if you do break it, I don't see how you would change an arm without taking all, the entire base plate off, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws so far to get the base plate off. That's commitment. Now this is the part where you would install your XT60, your ESC, and so forth using, you know, it would just go on and make a stack as normal. The XT60 would get fastened here and installed in there. Of course, we're going to skip all that because we're not doing a full build and we'll continue as if we had. This is the front and it goes here. And that's an M3 by 12 cap head. That's fucking... Of course, M3 cap head has a two and a half millimeter. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks, metric system. M3 should be the same both ways. No, cap head is two and a half. And then we've got the side, which I don't know what's going on there. That's fascinating. So far, so good. Here, now we've got it all almost assembled up and for the motors I'm not going to be able to demonstrate how they go without actual motors but basically here I'll show you the photo basically these metal pieces are going to go across the back like so just lay across the back holding the motor in place I'm fascinated by this frame and yet I'm also supremely annoyed by it and I'm a little hesitant to express that to you guys because like when I did my build of the Armitan Armadillo, I was unfamiliar with the way it went together and I was annoyed by it. And I expressed that annoyance in the build and people took that as a condemnation of the frame and I don't want to do that. This is a really interesting and innovative, somebody just went, let's just do, th how many frames have you seen that are just like a copy or they look just like every other frame out there? The guy who invented this frame is an insane genius. And I want to encourage that. And if you're looking at this frame and you're like intrigued by it, I want to encourage you to get it so that more insane geniuses can continue to exist and come up with new ideas. That being said, like the number one thing I would I worry about with this frame is if I needed to swap an arm, it's a lot of screws to take out to get this bottom plate off to get the arm out. It's not as bad as it seemed, I guess, at the beginning because like you're... Your stack is going to stay on the bottom plate, so your stack isn't going to have to come apart, so that's good. You, But wow, that's a lot of screws to have to take out just to change an arm. So these arms better be really strong. Uh, this, say, this unidirectional carbon fiber better be like wonder material. Um, I still am intrigued with how it's going to fly with the camera mounted way near the back. It is a brilliant thing this guy has done in that the very front of the frame where you take the most impact haha, is this big bulky metal right so yeah that's exciting i would love to see how this frame crashes i'll bet it's durable as hell and having the camera put back here and behind does the lens stick out behind in the front i don't know about that no see it doesn't yeah the lens is kept behind this this seems like it's one of the best protected frames that you could get so maybe the annoyance of having to build it would be offset by the fact that it would just never break hmm. anyway that's the aerodyne rc rex and the other one that i showed you today is the schnapp dragon two very interesting innovative frames links down in the video description to product page for them and you can go check them out if you're interested i'm going to build I might, I might build both. I don't know. I'm going to build at least one of these out. So you tell me which one you'd like to see me build. If you want to punish me, make me build this one. <laughs> no, just vote for whichever one you like. I'm going to just decide. Fair, fair being, it's not a democracy. I'll decide in the end, but I will take your votes into consideration when I make the decision. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Aerodyne RC and Schnapp Dragon for sending me these frames to review. Thank you guys both for coming up with like interesting, innovative ideas, especially Aerodyne RC. What the hell is going on here? Um, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.